Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create your Kindle book and using Google, Google's free application, Google Drive. So what I've done is I've created my free Google account and it's uh, writebooksforkindle at gmail.com. Feel free to email me. And once I've come to my landing page for Google, I just simply click on their little um, app indicator and select Google Drive. Once I'm at the Google Drive screen, I have an opportunity to create a lot of different things. Um, when I choose the Create button, the most commonly used or default apps um, are displayed. So this is also where I do a lot of my drawing. And the reason that I do my graphics here is because it's saved out on the web. So if I create something and I'm at home at my desktop, um, it's out there for when I take the kids to the pool and they're splashing around and I want to do a little more work, I can just log on to my Google account and continue to edit my document or my graphic. So today I'm going to show you how to um, edit a document and I'm going to choose document. So um, the reason we would use Google Drive is because it's free. Many people have Microsoft Word. I have Microsoft Word because I'm a total geek, but not everybody has it, and not everybody has a current version. And um, the thing about Google Drive is it's free. All you need is a computer and an internet connection. So I'm going to um, copy and paste some text from a Word document, and you can see that it is completely unformatted. And the reason that I'm using unformatted text is because I want to show you how Google Drive works very similarly to Microsoft Word in formatting and creating table of contents. So this is not so pretty looking, correct? The first thing I'm going to do, if you watch the tutorial on Microsoft Word, using Microsoft Word, the first thing that, that we're going to do is we're going to change everything from being normal text in the styles area to being headers, normal text, and headers one, normal text, and headers two. So anything that has the top level is going to be a header one. So I'd simply select it and then I assign it. Anything that is a secondary, sorry about that, anything that is a secondary level is going to be header two. Regular text is regular text. So I'm going to just go and click my subtopics and make them headers, the subheaders. And let me scroll down and find my other chapters. And I'm just simply making them headers. This right here is a graphic that I had inserted. This is interesting because this is a quote. It's not a header. It's not a header one, header two, or subtopic. But I can look and see if there are other options um, for, for designating quotes to automatically format a certain way. However, as if you watch the tutorial for Microsoft Word, you know all we really did was make this italic. It's the same. Uh, a similar font to the other font, uh, simply italic. Okay, and I'm just going to stop here um, on the headers. Um, you will notice that the font that's being used is Arial. There are two families of fonts. There are serif and sans serif. And basically, serif is a font that has little wings. And sans serif is a font that does not have wings. Sans means not, I guess. Um, and Arial and these, these fonts are sans serif. Normally, we use the fancier fonts for writing books. So I'm just going to choose Control and the letter A to select everything. And then I'm going to select this down arrow, and I'm going to assign Times New Roman. Times New Roman is the standard for book writing. It really is. I mean, you can't go wrong. It converts well. It looks nice. It's a very professional looking font. 
The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put page breaks at each chapter. So I'm going to choose insert and then point to page break or you'll see here that it uses the same keyboard shortcut as Microsoft Word uses and that is control enter. So if I wanted to I could just choose control enter on my keyboard and it would automatically put the page break. So this is a natural page break. Looks okay, right? The problem with natural page breaks are that when the book gets converted to a Kindle, this may not be where the natural page break is. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm, oops, I removed that formatting by accident. I'm going to still put a page break, but I'm going to put it after the ending of the chapter in front of this chapter. And it looks like there's a blank page there, but uh, actually there won't be a blank page. And so I didn't really format this one. I'll do it. And then I'm going to page break here. Okay, so now that I have page breaks, now that I have my chapter headings, it's time for me to create my table. Um, so fire, there it is. Under insert, choose table of contents. And voila, here's the Google Drive table of contents. So if I changed this to incredibly exciting information and I change this to something you really need to know and I change this to to make thousand dollars in three days then I go back up to my table of contents and I choose update table of contents. You'll see how it updates. Cool, right? So let's just take a look and see what this will do like. View, print layout mode, viewing. So I'm going to choose viewing final document and you'll see that it looks good, looks good. And there's my next chapter. Right? So that's nice. It looks really good. Um, one of the things that you're probably going to want to do is you're going to want to put a page break and have the table of contents on its own page. Uh, the only other thing that you should know about Google Drive is it is, I'll dismiss that, it is always saving. So I don't have to actually click save. But right now, this is saved as an untitled document. So I am going to um, name this uh, formatting my Kindle book in Google Drive and choose OK. So you'll see it says here all changes saved in Google Drive. I'm good. I can go back to my Google Documents and there's my document. Pretty cool, right? I know. I know. It's cool. I still prefer Microsoft Word because I find that it's more flexible formatting wise. And um, I personally own the Office 365, which is also out on the web. So I don't run into the limiting the limitations of having to be at my desk. But I do use Google Drive for the graphics almost exclusively because of the different apps that are available for um, for creating really professional looking graphics with not having to have too much experience as a professional graphics designer. And that is my that is my tutorial. Thank you for watching.